Hello, welcome to this interactive session, which I hope you will find helpful. I've spent some time making a little puppet here. It's a uh, interactive model of the second metatarsal of the left foot, alt scale. And not only is it a model of the foot with all the joints active, but it's got a uh, little uh, acting like pulleys here, uh, all the relevant tendons from the muscles. I've, I've got the muscles in, I'm going to be the muscles. Um, and um, those in the workshop have had to play with this and it's very, very informative. And so when we do the workshop together, you'll all be able to have a go at it. So here's the second metatarsal and color coded in green. The proximal phalange, proximal means closest and phalange of the toe, and it articulates on the metatarsal. And then the medial phalange, which is here, I've got it so it got a limited dorsiflexion, which is true on the foot. And then we have the distal phalange here. And then I've got four rings that I use uh, in my puppetry. This is a bit rude, I'm sorry, but we got the uh, extensor, extensor muscle in it. Not going to talk about digitorum because it's all digitorum. But so this is the extensor digitorum longus and the extensor digitorum brevis. Now the extensor brevis, the muscle comes right here. But from here on, the two virtually act in unison. And the, the reason there's two is the uh, brevis muscle is fine tuning. It's sort of, again, we use it for writing. And so it's... Um, you can imagine you walk in the door carrying a suitcase with your longest muscle, and then you put it down and you sign the register um, with your brevis muscle. One, one is very strong, the other is very subtle in its movement. So I've got a ring on the pink cords for them, and they pass over the denser hood on the MPJ, the second MPJ, and over the uh, distal end of the uh, medial phalange, it trifurcates, and that means it goes into three slips. So you've got two of the slips go either side and insert into the dorsum of the distal uh, phalange, and the medial of the three inserts into the dorsum of the medial phalange. So if I were to pull on the ring, you can see what happens is that raises the toe. Okay, see that it's raising the toe. The next one we've got is the opposite of the extensors, and that's the flexor digitorum longus uh, muscle. So I'm, again, I'm just going to say the flexor longus. So this is in the leg, and it comes under the metatarsal, passes under the hood, under the, the plate, of the hood, I haven't included on the model, it's on the diagrams. The deep fascia uh, creates a little plate that this rotates on. And the flexor longus is the blue, and it comes all the way under, and it inserts, it bifurcates, and inserts into the base of the distal phalanx. So if I pull on the blue, what you'll see is it does that. And I pull on the pink, comes back up, you see that? So by pulling on the, the two, I start a bit of the magic here. So the pink on top, I pull, pull it up, and the uh, blue pulls it down. See that? So there's your antagonistic muscles operating the distal phalange. Now we're gonna look at some of the intrinsic muscles. So this is the flexor, longest muscle, and here's the flexor brevis muscle. So the flexor brevis muscle, it follows pretty parallel. The muscle is right up to here underneath the metatarsals, and it travels in the same way underneath the plate, uh, and it inserts into the plantar surface of the medial phalanx. So it has a different action. So see if I pull on the longest, it does that. If I pull in the brevis, it does that. Now, this sets us up for the fourth muscle, which is the lumbrical. And the lumbrical does this. Watch this. Yeah, so the lumbrical does this. It straightens it out. 
You have to learn the puppetry that the lumbrical is an antagonist to the flexor brevis. So I pull on the flexor brevis and let the lumbrical go. Does that. If I let go on of the flexor brevis and pull on the lumbrical, it comes back up. The lumbrical muscle is interesting. It's one of the few muscles in the body that doesn't touch a bone anywhere. It originates on the tendon for the flexor longus tendon. And so the muscle sits right in here, and you'll see it on the diagram. And having passed under the plate of the extensor hood, and you can see it as the white cord here, it joins the extensor hood and comes up onto the dorsum of the proximal phalange and then joins up with the tendons of the denser muscles. You know, see that? So it originates on the flexor muscle tendon, and it inserts into the extensor tendon. So it's, it's got, it gives us this dexterity. Okay, and around here, I've got a sheet that, that just holds all the various uh, tendons together so that I can operate it. Now, I've been practicing. It's taken me a while to learn. And when you all come on to the practical course after the shoe conference, you can all have a go. And you, you can see why it takes us a, a few years to really learn to walk properly. OK, so I'm just going to shift it here. Yeah, there we are. I'm going to take you through the walking stance. Here we are, the, maybe the foot up on a heel of the shoe or even on bare feet, it'd be down here, but it's still elevated with respect to the toe. So we, you know, got a bit of tension on the extensor and a bit of tension on the two flexors and a bit of tension on the lumbrical. And what it's doing is it's pulling everything, the distal against the medial, against the proximal, against the metatarsal, and creates a really a strong, rigid beam. So it's held that, that way, the foot is landed, and you know, we come into mid stance, the forefoot loaded, and then so the other foot is swinging through, and at heel strike, on the other side, we start active propulsion on this side. So note that this is called an extensor muscle, not a dorsiflexor, okay? But the flexor is an actual plantar flexor. So the extensor extends the toe, but it doesn't dorsiflex the toe. So here we are, active propulsion. So the calf muscles are firing. So the whole foot lifts up. Okay, so it's lifting up. And what I've done is I've taken the slack up with the extensor muscle. And now we've gone into passive propulsion. So the uh, calf muscles are starting to relax because the weight is coming onto the other foot. And then these other three uh, muscles begin to fire and lift off the toe. And you can see that the last thing we'd fire is the longest and up we go. And then we go forward and then we land. And again, they all fire slightly to create that rigid beam. I'll just show you it again. So uh, swing through, heel strike on the other side, the calf muscles fire, active propulsion, the metatarsal bends up as well as the whole foot, and the all the extensor muscle does is take up the slack. Passive propulsion, the weight is now shifting strongly onto the other foot. The three, the lumbrical and the two flexor muscles begin to fire, lift the toe off the ground, and off we go. And then we take our step, okay? Come through and then land and again, form a rigid beam. Just show you that twice so that you really get it. Okay, now we've seen a lot of foot deformities as shoemakers, and I wanna show the foot deformities can happen because of disease such as diabetes or Charcot-Marie tooth disease, or injury, there could be injury to the back that disrupts some of these muscles. The muscles, these, these muscles come out of a different part of the back than these muscles. But one of the main causes is because we're a shoe wearing community, we don't learn how to differentiate these muscles very well. And so the biggest cause 
of toe deformities is actually imbalances in the muscles. So the first one we're gonna look at is a mallet toe. So we've got everything working well, except that we've got a hyperextension of the flexor longus muscle has gone really tight. And you see what happened. So a mallet toe is where everything is straight except the distal hallux. And mallet toes usually occur only on one toe and often as a result of injury. So if I can straighten it again. And the injury will be up here and it'll be a, an injury to the trifurcation, usually disrupting the lumbrical muscle. Okay, so you won't find a mallet toe happening on a healthy foot because the lumbrical will insert here along with the others and prevent it happening. Okay, so a mallet toe is a combination of a strong longus flexor and an injury to the top. Okay, so here we are. The most common is a hammer toe. And a hammer toe is where you have got let go of the lumbrical. A hammer toe is where the lumbrical becomes weak. See that? So I've let go of that lumbrical. I've got uh, also a bit of weakness on the extensor muscle, but the really strong ones are down here, the gray, which is the flexor brevis and the flexor longus uh, digitorum muscles. You see, so what happens with the hammer toe that because the extensor muscle is weak and the lumbrical muscle is weak, and again, we have to learn how to use these muscles. We have to learn by walking in bare feet. So again, here's it is. And now I'm re-engaging the uh, lumbrical and there, down it comes. See that? So it's a, if I let it go, hammer toe, and then uh, pick it up again, give it a pull, down it comes. If you never learn how to use your lumbrical, you could easily end up with a hammer toe. And it's very, very common. Another kind of toe deformity, not as common as the hammer toe, is where we also lose power in flexor brevis. So I'm gonna drop the flexor brevis and look what happens. We get a claw toe. Okay, see that, a claw toe. So a claw toe is where both the intrinsic muscles, the the brevis muscle and the lumbrical have been let go. So I'll re-engage the brevis muscle and I convert the claw back into a hammer. I re-engage the lumbrical and the hammer comes back to being straight. See that? Okay. Now the last kind is called a retracted toe and a retracted toe is sort of like that and then like that. That's fairly common. And the retracted toe, often it's, a, again, it's where it's like a claw toe where the brevis and the lumbrical are really weak or the person doesn't know how to use them or they've been damaged in some way. Such as can happen with peripheral neuropathy of the forefoot, but both the extensor and the flexor are strong because peripheral neuropathy does not usually go above the ankle. So a retracted toe is almost a claw toe, but a claw toe is where the extensor comes weak and it turns into a claw. So those are your deformities. And I'm gonna, I'll write it up. I'll take photographs of those happening individually. And so this little movie, is accompanying the PDF and I'll go through the PDF as part of delivery as well.